Warning, the following content may contain elements that are not suitable for some audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello, kitties. This is y'all's duly John Kassir, the voice of the Crypt Keeper. And you're listening to Slasher Radio. <laughs> All right, so welcome to Slasher Radio. Don't you know about the yeah? <laughs> and I like every week a time to just start the podcast. A sound effect start of the podcast. <laughs> wow, my how's sound everybody effects? doing tonight? God bless myself. Hold on, my sound effects are moving up in the world. They're starting the show. You done? For now. You done? You done for now? For now. Take a deep breath. Oh wait. Yeah, no, no, I'm not good. You good? You yeah, good? I'm good. You good? All right. Good. Welcome to Slash Radio this week. It's me, Corner Pocket. Corner Pocket, you fuck. Thanks, Doza. Doza's not here. Doza's not here. I wish Doza was here. I That'd don't. Fuck Doza. That'd be fun. Fuck Doza with a long thing. Last time he was here, it was horrible. I wish that would happen again. I'm here too. Yeah, Bones is here. Bones never leaves. He's always here. I'm just kind of. I'm like herpes. I don't go away. So I thought you goes away. <laughs> You're stuck with herpes. It's like luggage. You never you would know. Shit. Yeah. You would know. No, no, I wouldn't know. But I, I mean, I do know. But <laughs> welcome to Slasher fucking radio. <laughs> and we have April. Yes. Dismay. Hi, dismay. Hi, Bones. How are you? Great. I wanted to ask April how she was. I'm avoiding Miranda <laughs> this episode. <laughs> and that was recorded. I had said some things. That I was more proud of, but we weren't recording, so <laughs> that'll do. This may say some bangs, boy. Maybe one day future bonus feature. I wish. That was... You say you have it. I don't have oh, it. You don't have it. I would... Oh. Hold on. You know what? I'm going to bleep myself. This never happened. I, I would suck a <laughs> to get that recording. <laughs> I should do that every time I curse. It would save me in editing. Oh, my God. Tremendous amount of time. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, we're, we're here. We're up in her. Um, Owl oh. has uh, flown the nest for this week. <laughs> Ooh, the microphone mm. shook on that one. What do you think about that, Dismay? Is it growing on you? It's it's getting better, yeah. It actually. is getting yeah, better. I, like that one. I, I put my soul, like, I, I meant that one. I felt it in my toes. The first time <laughs> or the second time that we did it, where he, like, really got into that sound, it was, like, perfect. <laughs> I like it. I mean, wait, hold on. This man, I had to ask you, like, do you, do you fully understand, like, the, what that means? Like, do you get it? Like, the, you know, fly in the nest and the, the wings flutter. Yeah, what's sure. not to get? Yeah, I get it, yeah. But, because she doesn't like it, so. But what's not to get? Well, I don't get no, why she don't I like, like it. it now. Because <laughs> oh. it's better now. So I like it now. Can it's the, it again, it's the same Can you do it again? Thing. Hey, she wants you to do it again. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh-huh. <clears throat> nope. Nope. <laughs> I, I want everybody listening to know this is one of those nights where me and Bones are recording in the same location. God, I so I got to see him like take the deep breath and pound on his chest <laughs> just to get denied. That that was that you held my hand right that to was that. So good. Right to it. Why are you being a dickhead fool? Yeah, so. Stop being a dickhead. Anyway, um we yeah. have a really good Oh wait, before we get into that what, what we you got some shout outs. I do have some shout-outs. You always forget about the fucking shout-outs. I don't. I'm looking for the shout-outs. But now, you ruined it, and I was trying to stall for time, <laughs> and here we go. <laughs> Thanks, Corner Pocket. Now everyone has to wait while I look through my Gmail. We so. were waiting anyway. I'm watching you, so. Here we go. Yeah, this is riveting. <laughs> this is... 12 nights of horror.com. Oh, no, you do not. Hold on, hold on. Turn that fucking Jeopardy thing off. Where is oh, it? Oh my god, this is no. Awesome. You do not take the sound. The, 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 <laughs> I'm confused. Fucking Hennessy. 
Dismay? No. I love this episode. Bad. And, and so once good. they hear my voice do it, they're going to be like, wow, she should do it from now on. My voice is sensual. Is that the right word? For no. Oh. <laughs> no. Oh, wait, are you just... In the no, it, it is the right word. Yes, it is the right word, but it's not. I like to disagree. Why can't I find drives? You Literally made right this here. Happen. It's right in front of your face. I was stalling perfectly, and now you people know I... People I have... know what stalling is like, especially when this is episode further you know episode that this is in 35 i believe 35 35 episodes and they, you still don't remember it they don't okay they here know goes the, what, ready I, I will mute you right now <laughs> i will mute you right they now. know <laughs> the shout outs come at this time of the podcast so obviously the if they're waiting 12 nights apart 12 nights apart, Just, yeah, on, 12 nights apart on twitter i would take this all out so <laughs> You won't take it. That was good. I have other people to shout out too. Thank you very much. This is good. You oh, won't okay. take this out. Thank you very much. So, you, you, so you, whenever you're, you're ready, because I gave those. them to you already, so you can just repeat them if you want. Oh, you, you can get a 30 day shutter trial with the Slasher Prod, Slasher Pod see? promo. See? <laughs> see? See? Yeah, because you're because we're like on top of each other here. <laughs> I'm gonna grab your. Whoa! <laughs> is everybody done? I think we should just throw this episode away. Let's just stop recording and be done with it. I like this mm -hmm. episode. This is fun. I wish Dismay wasn't here. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> I know you miss your, your boyfriend, Bobby. Oh, Bobby. Why do you have to leave me? <laughs> I miss Bobby. I don't even have any, like, heartfelt sound effects and nothing. Like, I have... The uh, heartfelt stuff comes from your heart. Yeah, but... You know what? Tear it up! Tear it up for Bobby. One time. <laughs> Tear it just one time. Tear it up for Bobby. Oh, Lord. All right. You can get 30 free days on Shutter using the Slash and Pod promo code. You can also go to horrormoviesandstuff.com. You can go to 12 nightshorrorcom You can go to promotehorror.com. Horror, horror, horror. You can also listen to Slash and Radio on 12 nightshorrorcom and promotehorror.com. You can open up a new tab while you're looking through all your favorite horror news and listen to the podcast while you're doing so. That was good. You can both suck my balls. It took like five minutes to get there, but yeah, that was it took good. A long time. But but I nailed it. Yeah, I mean, it was that. it was like an eight. It was like an eight. That was that was phenomenal. Uh, I'll give that nine and a half. That nine and a half. That oh. no no I refuse. That was a, I took I took off a half a point because it took too long to get it open. But I'll, you know eh, half a point. That was efficiency. That was that was professional. That was five minutes too late. But I nailed it, alright? <laughs> nailed that shit. Okay. Oh, I also have some other people to talk about. Please. Uh, James Almond at KP Nuts. Uh, what? <laughs> you fucking heard me right. <laughs> that, I, I did. KP Nuts, one, two, three, on Twitter. I, don't, I would love to know what KP stands for. I'm going to DM you, James. Uh, he subscribed to the show, which is awesome and what you guys should be doing. Uh, you can go on iTunes, you can go on Stitcher, and. Um, I think even SoundCloud. Can SoundCloud, you? you can get like notifications. You can subscribe on SoundCloud. Notifications. I don't like SoundCloud. I like SoundCloud. SoundCloud's been helping us out since day one. Fuck SoundCloud. SoundCloud is where our show is. iTunes, and Stitcher. But that gets it from SoundCloud. So but, if you I say fuck SoundCloud, they remove us, then we're gone. They can't remove us. I can say fuck them all I want. I'll make a fuck SoundCloud sound effect and play it in mm. every episode. Can they remove us, though, for saying fuck SoundCloud? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they can. <laughs> fuck SoundCloud. We're they, we'll SoundCloud find out. Is way too big yeah. to find us specifically, but I'm sure they could. I hope you're enjoying the last episode of Slash <laughs> Radio. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, thank you, James, for uh, subscribing to the show. He was uh, Bartender Dave, uh, at Bartender Dave 74 on Twitter. He has, or had, I don't know the situation with his podcast called Call to Arms, and um, yeah, he gave us a nice little shout out, and James found us through him, so thank you, Dave, thank you, James, and fuck SoundCloud. Um, <laughs> Gregory DeLina, at Never Quit Saves, which is a phenomenal Twitter handle, uh, he was retweeting the show, um, he's been supporting the show, and his uh, little... Whatever that logo thing is on the tweeter, the cover uh, picture. The cover, yeah, the cover it says picture. It right there. Oh, they did write cover picture. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's a Cars Against Humanity cover picture. Nice. Yeah. So a little, little but nothing. Oh. I know you like Cars Against. I do. I do like Cars Against Humanity. I just love seeing you crash and burn. It's so good. 
I hate both of you. It's so amazing. And I'm making my Saturday night. <sighs> I'm not even going to say it. Uh, Gunnar Kiefer? 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 And Kiefer. This man, can you see my screen? No. This man, you can. You can. You're just you not can. Fucking unbelievable. Yeah, it's, it's Kiefer. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay, so Gunnar Kiefer. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> at Gunnar Kiefer <laughs> on Twitter, <laughs> underscore... <laughs> Between it, uh, he's been uh, he's been retweeting the show, and you know he commented a couple things back and forth. We appreciate the support. His bio on Twitter is: I love comedy and comic books. Also, my favorite kind of music is Logic. I love Kate Quinley and Joe Rogan. I'm 18 and single. Hmm. He's trying to hook a listener up. I, I'm trying to. So if anybody's looking, is that what this is? This is this is what Slash Radio is now. Session Radio is about love and <laughs> and tranquility yeah. and yeah, okay. and um Head up. all those things and yeah so if anybody is looking for a nice young man who enjoys comic books and logic and Kate Quinley Kate Quinley I doubt you listen to the show but if you do hit up uh, our friend Kiefer um all right oh possibly my favorite shout out of all time yeah shout out to the dude in Japan. There is, yes. I, I track yes. our listens. I love this. I know exactly what this is. Yes, we have 33 episodes. Th- this is 30. 34. We have, from Japan, 33 listens exact. I don't think it's a coincidence. There is one dude in Japan who's listened to every episode. So whoever you are, get at us on Twitter. Shout out to the dude in Japan. I'm, right. I'm done talking, though, so you guys do what you do. So that's what you, that's Apparently, I'm not wanted here. That's what you're doing now. This is what this intro is. Yeah, I'm done. Go ahead. All right, move over. Move up. Go. <laughs> you, you can do whatever. You no, you do. said you were done. So now you gotta. Go. I'm gonna sit here and listen. So you're not done. You're gonna be here. I'm still done talking. So you're done. Yeah. So oh, this gonna be your, this gonna be your your week, your intro. You're gonna go hard. Oh, you want this is the great episode that you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and now you're done. I, I was hoping one of you guys would do the honors. Okay, so this week had a great talk one of our interviews with what are you doing i'm not doing good you're moving do what you do. can i can i stop you for one second yes help help it's you happening have this, okay. the attack is on o'grady farm uh yeah baby help the the leprechaun is attacking yeah yeah this is what this week is about <sighs> you know, you know, boston <laughs> right talk with Lyndon porco who is the upcoming Leprechaun? Leprechaun returns. Yeah, man, taking over, uh, taking over the buckle on the boots from Warwick Davis in the new film, and uh, there's the one in between, right? Yeah, we're not. No, this is your franchise. This is Origins is not part of my franchise, but um, <laughs> yeah. So Linda Porco, he's taking over the new Leprechaun upcoming uh, Leprechaun returns you can say new film, and upcoming. but it's upcoming. Twenty nineteen, which is upcoming. Even more. I should have stopped talking. Year. Um, yeah, he's going to be the new Leprechaun. Um, the tra- We obviously couldn't get into the new film because sci-fi wouldn't be too happy about that since the shit ain't out yet. And, uh, yeah, so we kind of talked about the old film and, you know, a little bit of his background with how he got into acting. And, you know, he had a very... It took me off guard take on horror oh yeah like, that's the mm-hmm. really interesting aspect of this week yeah that turned like i didn't know what to do i was like oh it's like spun all my notes around and i took my pants off like i didn't know what to do i was so confused <laughs> both of our pants are on I, i'm not wearing any drawers right i'm now. i'm looking at them I, i'm letting you know i'm wearing no drawers right now what is this under my pants oh, und- oh i hate you so fucking much breaking news slash radio i am not wearing underwear right now Oh god! Well, neither am I. This is a bathing suit. Ah, uh, so so we're free balling it together. <laughs> free balling it together. We've been sitting here for like two hours. Dude, our balls have been inches from each other <laughs> with just the oh smallest god. slither of cloth. Should, should I say fuck? <laughs> you should. <laughs> I mean, you should say what you feel. No. Wait till the outro though, because. Uh, I hope you enjoy Linda Porco. Uh, we did. We, I actually had a lot. I of had fun. a lot of fun. I got to talk football, which is rare on here. So. I, I like that. You did get to talk football. Yeah. So, yeah. Enjoy, everybody. See you guys on the other side. God bless, Tennessee.
All right, so uh, as we've been advertising on Twitter and uh, pretty much all over the place, uh, we deliver with Lyndon Porco, the star of the upcoming Leprechaun Returns and uh, a bunch of other projects that we're going to get into later today. And uh, how are you doing, Lyndon? I'm great. I'm great. Uh, Happy to be here. Happy to have you because um, it's kind of a a running thing on the show where I am, and we have another co-host who's not with us today, but we are... Big Leprechaun fans. Like, the original franchise, we love it, and it's kind of, um, we have to defend it quite a bit. Yeah, we are. So, um, yeah, it's, it's kind of like a, an ongoing battle that our co-hosts and Bobby and I have been fighting. And uh, it kind of leads me into, I guess, the first question to where, um, you know, the, le- the as far as a horror movie goes, you know, the Leprechaun f- original franchise... It's kind of, it, it's one of those things that you either love it or you really don't like it, and there's not a lot of gray area there, and um, were you a fan of the the original franchise? Well, to be honest with you guys, uh, I never watched the original franchise until uh, Stephen Kostansky, who was the director on the film, told me to, told me to watch it to sort of just get my... Uh, my bearing straight. And the reason why I didn't watch it was because I am absolutely scared crapless of horror. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't blame you. Yes. So I uh, I never I never watch horror movies to uh, to just for my own enjoyment because I don't understand and this is just my personal, you know, thoughts about it is why somebody would like to get scared no offense, shitless, when you, <laughs> yeah, when, Bob, when you're watching a film. I, I mean, that's just me. I'm just, but that's, uh, yeah. Anyways. Yeah, that kind of led to my question, because I was going to ask you if you've ha- always had a liking for horror or were your Channel Zero and Leprechaun roll something new you wanted to try, but, um, you know, you kind of answered it with that, that um, you don't like to be scared, I guess, watching a film. No, no, I love being, I love scaring people, don't get me wrong, but being scared, I, uh, I'll be one of those people who go uh, in the movie theaters, uh, underneath their, uh, underneath their shirt or their sweater, just cringing and waiting for that next person to get slashed with a tire iron or something <laughs> like that, you know? <laughs> wow, that's, that's crazy that you, so, when you were, when you were approached to, cause I mean, obviously, I'm sure you've heard of the frame, you know, it's pretty iconic franchise absolutely when you were approached for that not really being into the genre did, did you jump at it immediately did you have to think about it like what, what happened with that no i i love playing those those creepy roles like smart mouth in uh in channel zero it was uh it's an amazing time you get to work with uh, some unbelievable people it's it's just uh it's what i love to do so any opportunity i can get to uh do play such an iconic role as uh, a le- the leprechaun. I uh, definitely would do it again for sure. Like I said, I especially the rich. I mean, they're obviously in the franchise. As you go deeper with really any franchise, you know, you get a few hit or miss movies, and you know there was some here. But I mean, the first two to me, and you know, a couple towards the end, I think were solid movies, especially the original. And like you said, mm-hmm. said that you know Warwick Davis. I mean, nailed that character so well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, just like, you know, with any original film that's been made, it's, you know, it can be difficult to go into this, you know, iconic role, I guess, uh, to fill those shoes. So was there anything special that you did to transform yourself into this this character? Uh, not necessarily. I would like to say no, I didn't, but I, I'm sure other people would say that I did. Um just because whenever I would get into a scene, I sort of just, I did transform into being the leprechaun. Um, I, I, that's just kind of the way I, I approach every uh, acting opportunity that I get, is I, I go after it 110%, no matter no matter what it is. And so I just sort of, it, it became a, a part of me. Uh, and so I 
just when after it, even after we were done doing a take, I would I would tease the other cast a little bit and doing my my creepy little uh, leprechaun uh, laugh and, and voice and that sort of thing. So. And when the trailer had come out, when I heard about the trailer, I was like, oh no, because you know, like I said, I was a huge fan of the originals and remakes usually kind of I I we we try and talk about Leprechaun Origins as little as possible. So <laughs> you know, I. I try to talk about Leprechaun as little as possible. See, this is this, <laughs> Lyndon. This is what I'm talking about. I, I, it's a battle. I need a statue somewhere. You haven't let me get in. Yeah, you know, I have nothing against the Leprechaun franchise, but what my mm-hmm. co-host Bowens over here has is this like undying like love that he is bringing it just <laughs> because of the other people on the podcast who doesn't appreciate it. As much. That's not true, and <laughs> Linda, I'd, actually, I'd actually like to share with you, because part of the, the reason why Leprechaun, the original movie, was one of the first, th- I, don't, I don't think it was the first movie it was so long ago, where um, I remember I was supposed to be in bed, and my mother was watching the original Leprechaun, and I snuck out of my bed, and there's a part of our living room where you can kind of hide on the side of the couch when you walk in, so I was laying there on the floor watching a good 40 minutes of this movie. She had no idea I was there. And um, the the part of the original movie where, uh, I, I forget the kid character's name, uh, he had said, fuck you, Lucky Charms. I busted out laughing and blew my own cover. <laughs> and that, I mean, that, and I, I had to go back and find it and watch it. And like, it was, it was a big part of me getting into the horror genre. And, mm-hmm. you know, I, I think Warwick Davis, uh, kind of transitioning into my next question, what do you emulate and what do you do to cre- kind of make the character your own? Because, I mean, he was in, which is rare, every every part of the franchise up until, you know, the last one and now this one. So what, what do you take from him and how do you kind of throw your own spice in there? Uh, so basically, um, I, I, I didn't really try to take uh, uh, too much from him. Obviously, I, I watched the first one and I and I saw what it was all about. I already, you know, just being a, a movie uh, person in general, you already, you already know about the Leprechaun movies beforehand. So um, it was he is that iconic role, but I don't think that I really took too much from him. I think everything in the uh, in this movie is my own, um, and so. Uh, I basically, when I was talking to, to Stephen Kostansky, the director of the, the movie again, is that I sort of talked to him about the character. And so we developed this this character that, that is the iconic character and, and everything like that. But I, I modeled it actually after, uh, you know, the Dark, the Dark Knight? Of course. With uh, Heath Ledger? Mm-hmm. So basically, uh, I mean, I would never, <laughs> I don't want to say... But that's that's who I sort of. I definitely see where you're going. As soon as as soon as I thought of of the Leprechaun, I thought of the Joker, and because I love Batman films in general. But that was that's the one movie where I can always go back and rewatch it a thousand a million, a million times, and it still would never get old. So I sort of modeled, modeled the the Leprechaun after that. But I mean, to, Heath Ledger was an absolute outstanding performance in in, uh, in the Batman. If for that uh, Batman movie there for the Dark Knight, so um, I just sort of modeled it after after him a little bit and sort of put my own spin on it as well and just sort of whenever I I was in a scene as the Leprechaun I I became the Leprechaun like I transformed my whole self into being the Leprechaun but as soon as we cut you know I I, I got out of it to a certain extent but I was right ready to go back and in, into it as soon as they needed me to so it sort of it all came together, and uh, uh, I'm pretty happy with with my performance in it, and I can't wait for you guys to all see it. So that's that's really good. That just sounds really like inspiring, and I wish this movie was coming out a little bit closer to, to now so I can see it. Me too. Bones, you hear all of this from this like movie and Leprechaun, and then you you even had like your tale of your introduction to Leprechaun. If this is like such a big movie franchise for you and for a lot of people from what I can hear, why was the first Leprechaun movie that I was exposed to Leprechaun in the Hood? Um because we we uh we didn't we did an episode where we kind of compared the first Leprechaun to um where I kind of wanted to say okay, you know, the movie that I felt 
you know, it was the weakest of the franchise. I wanted okay. to see you at, I wanted you to see it at its best, and what I felt was the weakest of the, you know, uh, what was there? Like, uh, I feel like if I was a kid and if I saw Leprechaun one in the same way that you did, I would have like loved this franchise even more, and I would be with you fighting for this franchise. But no, and I, I, I really, um, damn, I, I, we, I, I probably should have <laughs> mentioned this when when we first started the interview. We obviously can't get into the upcoming film that that Lyndon is in because it, it's not out yet so obviously we can't and it's killing me right now because <laughs> I, I love I love your answer to that Lyndon because you know Heath Ledger is a perfect example like the Joker was is this iconic like what, what, what do you take and he did such a fantastic job of keeping true to that character but making it his own we've never seen that type of Joker before and oh my god there's so many things I want to ask you right now <laughs> Well, uh, you know what we can do is is that when it comes out, you can ask me all those questions. Definitely, definitely, I, for sure. Yeah, so I, I, I'm just I'm fanboying right now because I, you know, <laughs> the the trailer that, that I kind of mentioned earlier, when I was a little nervous, and when I seen it, I was like, oh shit, this is gonna be good because you know it's it, I, we kind of touched on origins where it was like completely off base, had really nothing to do with the franchise, and there you are where. They, they, they brought this character back, and you can tell from what you were saying in there where it, it looks like the same character, but there is something, I don't know, it felt like darker there, or more, something's conjuring, and, and it, it really, it really gets your brain going with that trailer. Yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely, uh, it's definitely a good teaser there for sure. Um, I'm really, they actually hopefully bring in a new trailer out soon, but uh, I don't know when that is, but uh, it will be hopefully soon because I, uh, I just want everybody to keep having that uh, excitement around the, around this leprechaun because I really do think it will, uh, it will be a good one and people will really enjoy it. And I wanted to ask uh, something. I don't know if you can answer it um, because it does pertain to the new movie, but can, um, are you able to talk about the the makeup effects and the costume at all and, you know, how extensive it was? Uh, I can tell you how, how long it was and everything like that, I think, I, I believe, yeah. Uh, so basically, yeah, it's, the, the makeup took about, uh, I think it was about five hours the first day we did it, and then it, we got it down to... Uh, three hours two and a half hours um in between things and whatnot so uh it, it was it, it got down to be really easy and get in the chair you know put it on blah blah good to go ready to go um the costume had about uh well let's see here one two uh three about th- three to four layers uh, on, on myself, um, so it was uh, it was a great costume. I loved wearing it. Um, the aspect of the prosthetics with, with everything that was involved with it um, was uh, was amazing. Uh, it was great to to do it. Uh, obviously, I mean, putting the makeup on is. It's not always the, the best thing for, for people. Some people love it, some people don't. Uh, I, I don't mind it. The more I, the more you do it, the more it, uh, easier it is, the more fun it is. I mean, every, obviously, uh, when I was with uh, Nicola and Graham, um, putting the makeup on for about uh, the 20 day shoot that we were doing, it uh, you get to know each other pretty well. So we had a uh, had some great times, great laughs. Um, and hopefully I'll be able to share some of those videos with you when, uh, when it comes out as well. So, um, yeah, I'm just looking forward to, to it really coming out is basically the main thing, right? So, yeah. That just sounds, again, like really reassuring and really awesome that there's like a return to prosthetics and like practical effects now. And that's just so great to hear, especially like in the horror genre as a whole. I feel like there was a long time that everything was CGI and everything was computer and you had like that fake element to it. So to hear that people are back in makeup chairs for so long, I mean, as long as you don't mind it, of course, but I oh, guess yeah. the viewer, it sounds amazing. Yeah. So basically, uh, uh, Steven, um, liked everything to be, uh, on CGI kind of thing, so it, he he tried to make his best effort into not making it and everything, uh, being like special effect, not special effects, sorry, but uh, 
uh, this the effects on camera kind of thing. So it uh, he did a really g- great job, and he's a he's an amazing guy, and uh, it was amazing to work with him. Uh, and he 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 is a truly an amazing uh, artist. It uh, it was amazing to work with just the whole cast and all the crew. It was uh, yeah, it's gonna be a uh, something to remember. That's for sure. <laughs> God bless your bladder. I don't know if I could sit somewhere that long. <laughs> no, no. See, the thing is, you, you can take breaks and you go to the washroom and, and, and that sort of thing. So it wasn't all at once. Obviously, there were certain things like, no, no, we need to, we need to finish this up first before you can go to the washroom. But, uh, uh, you, yeah, I left the chair probably about, uh, I don't know, five times in between that just to get up and move around and do stuff. So. See, that would, I mean, obviously me never being in any type of situation like that, like, if I have to go to the bathroom half makeup, then, like, I pass a mirror, like, I'd probably scare the shit out of myself. <laughs> oh, I definitely do that a fair amount of times, that's for sure. <laughs> I can imagine, that. that's kind of, I, I don't know, I, I, I can definitely see myself, like, scaring myself pretty good. I, I can't say enough about the, like, the depths of this character that you're playing the role of, I mean, it's there's just so many layers where it's demonic and, and evil and and then funny at times and playful and like and and very sarcastic and it's like is that that kind of has to be a roller coaster of, for an actor to kind of you know hit all those notes and in all these different scenes I would imagine. Uh, yeah, but it's 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 uh, it's fun to play with mm-hmm. um, when you have to to play. Uh, such an iconic role like the Leprechaun, you get to play around. And, and Stephen, again, was, was so awesome with, with us just trying new things and, and going for new things. And it was, uh, it was great. It, it, made my, it made it easier on myself to sort of just go after it and, and be the character that, that, uh, that I sort of am portraying it to be kind of thing. And then it, if, if something didn't work, then we'd talk about it and be like, okay, well, maybe that didn't work. Let, let's try it this way and, and see, see how that plays out. And so we would just play with the character and it really became uh, an amazing journey throughout, uh, throughout this, this 20 day shoot which was amazing, uh, and it came together to be this, I believe it's going to be an amazing uh, final product. And I know you've worked on a TV show as well. Um, what's it like transitioning from TV to film? Um, is it Does it take more time to prep as far as TV versus film? Uh, it's a quicker turnaround, I think, with, uh, with film because... You're shooting it uh, most of the time in less days than uh, a TV show would, obviously. And so, uh, but I think that it's the, for me at least, I think it's the the same, uh, I go through the same thing. As soon as I get into that makeup or, or that, that the area, I'm it's, it's immediately a part of me again. Um, Obviously, when I take it off, it, it, I leave everything behind and just let it go and until it, until I put it back on again. But as soon as you get that first aspect or that first layer on, um, it's you you become the character again, and and then it's just always inside of you until you take it off again. So I don't think the transition is too much, at least at least for me. Um, both projects were amazing to work on. Uh, but, uh, yeah, no, I think it's, uh, it's pretty, the transition is pretty, pretty easy. Wow. And, and yeah, we, uh, we had mentioned like, uh, April, I just mentioned where, <coughs> sorry, you were part of a, a horror franchise and seeing that you weren't too into the genre net, you know, per se, um, you know, this is your, another go at it for you. So now you're kind of, kind of getting dragged into this genre a little bit and it's like, it seems like you're welcoming it with open arms, so um, I guess I guess it kind of ties into where you said you enjoy scaring people but not being on the other side of it. So I mean that kind of makes perfect sense. It sounds like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, uh, yeah, I don't like uh, definitely don't like getting scared. That's for sure. But I love scaring people. I don't I don't know. There's something to it. <laughs> Did you um, especially with Channel Zero, I would say more. Did you watch that back like? Do you watch yourself back? Did you get scared by your own performance or anything else from the same thing that you um, work on? 
So, ba- so basically, uh, yeah. So, like I said, uh, I did watch uh, uh, Channel Zero back, and I thought it was an amazing, uh, amazing season that we had. Uh, the ending was was crazy. I would definitely check it out if you haven't seen it yet. Um, but getting back to uh, watching myself, uh, I don't necessarily get scared when when I watch it back um, because I know. Like I read every every uh, episode, so I knew yeah. what was going on. And obviously, there's a certain things in the episode where you forget about or, or whatnot, <laughs> but uh, that you can sort of pick at and everything like that. But uh, I, I didn't get scared of, about watching myself because I knew uh, what I did in, in each episode, and and so it was. Uh, it was. I, I think seeing the comments on Twitter and everybody and everybody commenting on it like that was, was pretty awesome to see because most people were scared of my character, which is amazing to have because you look back at it and you're like, okay, well when you film it, it's, it's not too scary. Everybody thinks it's scary, but I don't think it's scary because I'm, I'm inside of it. You know what I mean? So I'm just playing the character as how I would play it. Um, and just being sort of that, uh, homie nucleus child that, uh, really wants his prey kind of thing. So, do you think this is um like opening the doors for you to get further into horror, or are you just gonna stay as an actor and not like a, a person watching any horror movies? Uh, no, I don't. I don't think that uh, I, I'll uh, genre myself in, into being a horror actor. Uh, I believe I could, I could play uh, whatever. Um, people want me to, and I would more, be more than willing to play some more horror if, if that's what uh, they want me to do, but I would love to play some other characters as well, so um, yeah. Can you walk us through um, how you got started into film and TV in the first place? Uh, so basically, this is a pretty uh, touchy subject right now because of, uh, of about Vern Troyer, um, but he him and his manager basically got me into the industry and so uh, uh, yeah um, it was uh, it was pretty crazy so basically uh, I guess it was let me t- take a look here give me a sec I got a picture here about it um, I seen that I think I, I know what you're talking about too I seen that post that you had put up about uh, Vern, and it, it was it was uh, t- touching to, to see what you had to say about him and your experiences. Yeah, so i just trying to find the date that it was, but I think it was 2004, uh, 2003 maybe, um, when I met him. But I met him at the World of Wheels in, in Winnipeg, and... Uh, basically my family, my mom and my dad just wanted me to, to talk to him because he has the same type of dwarfism as me and sort of just ask him questions about how he's living his life and, and whatnot and how to go from there. And so we ended up meeting in the back and he asked, he took some pictures and, and talked and whatnot. And then he asked of what I wanted to do and he asked if I was interested in being an actor. And I said, of, of course, yes. And, uh, one thing led to another, and I ended up being on stage with him uh, while he signed autographs, just hanging out and, and talking and getting to know each other, and we ended up having lunch together that day as well, and then he, his manager actually got in touch with uh, some people from, uh, from Little Man and had me send in a tape of uh, just me being active and, and doing some certain things, and uh, she sent it in to them, and <laughs> one thing led to another again, and I got the part in, in, in Little Man, and so I, I have to pay my respects to him because he he was the one who got me into this industry, so um, he was very influential in, in my life, uh, to say the least. Yeah, and, and and as I, I had said, I seen your your post for him, which was uh, I I didn't know if I wanted to bring it up or not because I didn't know you know how close to home it was. But yeah, I mean, it's amazing that you know two thousand two like that was after Austin Powers and like he was a, a huge star and for him to take the time because you know obviously he didn't have to mm-hmm. you know like and it just goes to show what kind of a guy he was and like that that's amazing. 
the stories you don't hear about people and the things that they take their time out to do just because they feel like doing it. And there's no ulterior motive, nothing like that. And, you know, that that's just incredible that he, he was able to kind of help guide you like that. Yes, it, it was, uh, yeah, it was amazing. Everything that he did for me, uh, uh, especially that day, was uh, was great. And it, it changed my life forever, really. So, um, and I just, uh, I really uh, can't thank him enough. I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't mean to, um, you know, um, bring up any sort of subject, but I appreciate you sharing that um, story well, with us. That's I'm really happy. meaningful. I'm very happy to share, uh, share anything with you guys. Ah, so what happens in the new album? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the one thing that I could get in trouble. I noticed that um, Mark Holton is also returning in the, the new the new film that you're working on, and him obviously playing the, the character of Ozzy in the original, and I, I feel that that adds a lot of, like, authenticity, kind of. I don't know if that's the right word or not, but um, do you, how is working with him obviously being in the original and kind of... Um, the the biggest movie of the franchise, and to have him back like that that's gotta you know mean something for for the you know it's not just a, I, I I hate bringing up Origins, but you know like the, this is a real Leprechaun film where it's you know kind of right back into that franchise kind of thing, and having a, a original character in there. Um, how was it working with him? Uh, he was he was amazing. He, uh, yeah, he really was. It was no words can describe him. Really, he was, he was, he was incredible to to ask him questions about the original film and and, and everything like that. To, and then him coming and playing the character that he does, uh, it was it was great. He he was an he was an amazing uh, he's amazing to work with. Wow, see, I like hearing stuff like that, and, you know, obviously having somebody that was there, and, you know, I, he wasn't in any of the other films, but, you know, still being in that original film where it was all coming together and the tone was set going for everything going forward, you know, I mean, he's got to have some insight that's kind of kind of irreplaceable, I, I would imagine. Absolutely, and it, and it brought a huge uh, factor, like you said, to the original, uh, to bring it back to that original franchise, for sure. Yeah, I was excited when I seen him because I was like, "Oh man, it's, it's this is they're doing it right," and this this is I'm just super excited about the movie. Okay, Lyndon, I, I have two more questions for you. Absolutely. Are you familiar with the Leatherface series? <laughs> I'm sure you at least know of the character. You know, the guy with the chainsaw. Uh, yeah. Okay. Like chainsaw kind of thing. Yes. Now this is kind of um an ongoing thing with our show, uh, a debate, if you will, if. Leatherface, the dude with the chainsaw, and the character Leprechaun got into a battle. I mean, Leprechaun would win, right? Well, you know, the thing is, Leprechaun has the magic, right? So, uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, I can't, I can't say for sure, but I think the Leprechaun could have uh, an upside uh, than a than just a, a chainsaw. You know, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. April, do you care to comment on that or say anything? Or? No comment. Okay, good. No comment. All right. I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. You can't beat magic. Yeah, yeah. Especially when uh, when the gold is involved. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So if, if Leatherface near that gold, it's a wrap for him regardless. <laughs> but a little more of a, of a real topic. Um, what are the Vikings going to do this year? How are you feeling? I know you're oh, a big God. Vikings fan. I am a huge Vikings fan, yes. Well, you know it'll be interesting. I uh, a lot of there's a lot of who knows what's going to happen with uh, Kirk Cousins, but uh, I'm willing to give him uh, the benefit of the doubt for the first couple games. But uh, I uh, I'm not too happy with them not resigning Bridgewater. I can can say that for sure. I thought that uh, he was uh, he was amazing when before he got injured and then he did the whole he's doing the whole recovery thing when and to not even sign him to to see what he can do for this next season is uh it's crazy to me so yeah when when i seen they were going after cousins and the money they were paying him and i i knew it was bridgewater was then I, I feel the same way he was he was pretty good when he came in and but yeah we'll yeah. see cousins has never had a defense like this though so you, you never know yeah, but the the old line, I don't know how good the old line is going to be. I think a few people left as well, so we'll have to see about that. That's the one thing that we'll, we'll uh, at least I am as a Vikings fan concerned of is the old line because 
you got to be able to protect that eighty-six million dollar quarterback that you just right. picked. And 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 I have to also ask you that that touchdown pass last year in the playoffs, Stephon Diggs. <laughs> what what was your? I I haven't spoken to a Vikings fan about this. Like, what did you do when that happened? Uh, so basically, I was uh, sitting on my couch. Thinking, holy crap, this is over. Can't believe it. We played unbelievable, and then they came back, and now they're going to win. And so I jumped up onto my couch when he threw the ball. I was like, no way, no way, no way. What's going on? What's going on? And then he jumped over and missed him. And he caught the ball and ran in. I actually had, I took a snap of this. Uh, and just, was just in absolute awe of what had just happened. I think I was speechless probably till the next day about it because it was just, I mean, you, you just, uh, I'm speechless now just thinking about it. It's, it. It was ridiculous. I mean, holy crap. I, I agree. And I'm not a Vikings fan. You know, I was just watching it because I was like, okay, this, I, you know, I like football and this is going to be a really good game. So, you know, as the clock was winding down, I was like, ah, there's no way. Okay, so I started, you know, doing other stuff, and I still had the game on. And I'm watching that play, and I was like, holy shit. <laughs> and and I'm, not, I'm not invested at all, really. So, I mean, that 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 was, it's a shame the way it happened, ended in the next game. But, I mean, that was like, oh, my God, I've never seen anything like it. No, it was sort of a, a Minnesota miracle, that's for sure. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I, I cannot believe that that safety is not cut to this day. I can't believe it. <laughs> but uh, Lyndon, I can't thank you enough for coming by and talking to us. We really appreciate it, and um, I, I, I am excited for this film. I, I hope uh, you know as the we get closer, or hopefully a little after, so you can talk a little more about it. Uh, you can come back and, and tell us all the tales. Absolutely, I'd love to do that. It uh, really sucks I can't say more, but uh, that's that's what gets uh, everybody's hopes up as well, right? So uh, I can't thanks for, to you guys for having me on. I, I really appreciate it and uh, look forward to talking to you guys again. Okay, let everybody know. Oh, I'm sorry, you prepared? No, I was just going to thank him for coming again. It was really nice to talk to you about, about the film. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, thank you. I love getting insider knowledge and just more filmmaking knowledge about things, especially movies that aren't out yet. It's always interesting to hear. So thanks for taking the time out. Thanks for getting our <laughs> hopes up, Lyndon. Oh, I love it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, let everybody know where they can get in contact with you. If there's anything um, about the film, they can, you know, go and uh, obviously it's on YouTube, the trailer, and pretty much every horror website you can think of. But, yeah, let them know where they can get in contact with you. For sure. Uh, I believe your um, your Twitter handle is uh, Lyndon Porco, right? Yeah, yeah. And then also on Instagram as well um, is Lyndon Porco. Um, that, those are the two, uh, two uh, social media sites that I'm on. Um, and just uh, get at me and uh, ask any questions you guys like, and I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can. Except about the new movie. Because <laughs> we tried, and it's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, thank you again, Linda. We really appreciate it, sir. Thank you. Nope, thank you, guys. All right, we'll catch up with you later. We'll definitely be in touch. For sure. All right, so how did you guys like that interview? Thanks for sticking around. He was a lot of fun, actually. He liked to talk just about everything. Le Leprechaun would beat the shit out of Leatherface. Aww. That's all you wanted to say to wrap this up? Golden State beat the Rockets. <laughs> well, they know that. This is Tuesday, Wednesday night. This is the future. They oh, know who oh, was, oh, so... They know who's gonna win uh, tomorrow. I was gonna say, I know who's gonna win tomorrow. The Boston Celtics beat the Cleveland Cavaliers, and LeBron James is currently, whenever you're listening to this, it could be three years from now, <laughs> crying like a bitch. Like a bitch. I don't even know where to go from there. He, all I know you is did he, that Super Bowl prediction because we, we recorded before the Super Bowl, so you said that, so now this is your game. Fucking damn it, Batman. Fucking damn it, Batman. So, no, this is, wait. So, yeah. I thought that this game that was happening tomorrow was, like, the final. Mm -mm. There's another one. That, this is the, the conference. I, I feel really bad that, the like, Slasher Radio knows how much I don't know about sports. LeBron James is crying like a bitch. 
He's sitting on a toilet, taking the world's biggest shit. No, no, I'm sorry. The world's second biggest shit, because he is the world's biggest shit. Wow. And he is crying like the little bitch that he is on the toilet, and the Boston Celtics are moving on to the finals to get demolished by the Golden State Warriors. And it, it, even if he beats Boston, if he beats Boston, Golden State's going to just mop him. Is he up here? Stevie! Stevie! Oh, fuck. Here we go. Oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry. I want you to know that LeBron James sucks the biggest oh, on the planet. Please. Why'd you shit in my toilet like that? I'm not going to do it again. <laughs> the fuck you are, no, you're not. <laughs> Call the cops! <laughs> Give me that Call the ticket. Marines! The Marine. Call Dad. He's in there. Get him out. He's in the bathroom right now. Please. Kick the door in. I'm calling the SWAT team. That was... I'm sorry. That's Stevie Juice, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Steven fucking... Steven the Juice. Yeah. <sighs> so yeah, but I'm sorry. I got a little off track. Linda Porco was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed that. He's a great guy. It sucks we couldn't get into more of the upcoming movie, man, because... I mean, okay, let, let's talk about it now. Guys, like... It's, it's well documented. Like, you guys aren't the biggest fans of this, this franchise, and, like, mm -hmm. it's cool and all, but, like, you got, like, I, I'm assuming you've seen the, I know Corner Pocket did it, Cor uh, Dismay, did you? Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. That's why, I like, I, I had, I had forgotten to, um, note down about the, um, like, makeup effects and stuff, but, um, I wanted to throw that in there, and he did touch base on that, which was cool. Yeah, I mean, we, we had to, uh kind of give our notes to him uh, beforehand because like like we had said, the movie's not out yet and, you know, sci-fi wouldn't be thrilled about anything getting spoiled or leaked so, you know, they were just being precaution and I completely understand. Yeah, they have, have to be. Yeah, have to be. We, we you know, we understood completely but you kind of threw that in there out of, out of nowhere and good question with the, the special effects or the, the makeup rather. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't want to get him in trouble. That's why I said, like, you know, if you can, it's cool. But you know, you know. But I really like the way that he answered the question because he was like, "I could talk about this," and that was just as interesting. Yeah, I really um, see. I'm not. Well, you, everybody knows I'm not the biggest Leprechaun fan. I like the first movie. It's I, a good movie. It was a good movie. It was a good movie. I I wanted to say like during the interview, I really didn't get a chance. I feel like with the first movie and what this movie looks to be. That I didn't want to gas you up, or I didn't want to get your hopes up, but you're drunk as hell right now, so you might forget about this, <laughs> that I might actually start to think of the Leprechaun movies, you know, in a positive way, if this turns out to be good, because this looks really good. I was going to say to you guys, it looks darker. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I have mentioned that to him, and obviously he can't go anywhere with it, but it looks like, and we have mentioned he before. He said the word darker, though, so he yeah. knew, like he, and we had said it before where... If there was a Leprechaun movie where he was just, like, you know, he had his little slight humor to it, kind of Freddy Krueger-esque, and he just was going balls out, dark, killing, like, blood guts everywhere, yeah. just relentless, that would be In our Leprechaun awesome. episode, I do remember saying the most, like, I wish that they just turned the humor down. This could be it. Right. That's my it. problem with it, too, is that I'm, I'm not one for, um, like, horror and comedy. So you didn't like Freddy Krueger? That's different, though. It's a lot yeah. darker than um, than the Leprechaun. But, I what I, but it's there. But what I always think is, like, Freddy, not deserved, but he earned the humor. You know? He wasn't that funny right off the bat in the first movie, second movie. But he earned that shit. And he knew, like, if you make fun of him or, like, look at him like he's funny, he can fucking eviscerate you in a second. Like, he will shut that shit off and get you. And from the two and a half, three tops movies of Leprechaun that I've seen, and I'm not blaming it on the character, I'm blaming it on the whole franchise as a whole, like, as a, in writing and every little aspect, they didn't know how to turn the humor off. And even, it, it even got into the kills, like, the kills with the pogo stick, like, that was good, that was solid. But it was way too much, like, humor. It was almost like the late Child's Play stuff, but again, like, Child's Play started with horror, so it's fine. I think that wood scene in the original film was phenomenal. Oh, yeah. And if they can stick to more... Where, you know, he was, like, fucking with the cop in that scene. And it was, you know, he did have a little touch of humor to him. But it wasn't over. But that got lost by the time you get to Leprechaun in the Hood. 
Oh, well, yeah, yeah. No, I, I'm talking about the original. Yeah, there was yeah. nothing like that wood scene in Leprechaun in the Hood at all. Leprechaun in the Hood was the weakest film. They had, I mean... But that's Lepre- the only one that I've seen other than the first one, so that's all that I can say. Leprechaun in the Hood 2, I'm not going to sit here and say it's a phenomenal movie. It was much better than the Leprechaun in the Hood 1. I will but say But then that. you need to see Leprechaun in the Hood 1 before you see Leprechaun in the Hood 2. That's the problem. Yes. But I also feel, I mean, we're, we're, it's, you know, any movie has its downfalls towards the end. This one, I, I will agree, started quicker than, you know, Friday the 13th, Halloween, and all those. You know, these movies that you've gotten me to see over the course of the first six and a half, seven, a lot, a lot of months of Slasher Radio, I've seen all these movies that I didn't like, that I would never have seen, you know, Leprechaun in the Hood, fuck, why? You, when are you going to watch Texas Chainsaw Massacre? When are you going to watch Alien? I'll do an Alien episode. I'm open. I, I, I told you I would do it. Texas Chainsaw, I, I would say, since now, poor Bones dismay. Had me. It. Yeah, let's just put yeah. that out there. Bones promised me that if I did this Leprechaun episode that he would um, do a movie night Texas Chainsaw. I will. I will. I'll do, we'll sure do we an episode. I would love to turn the movie night into an episode. I mean, with with Hellraiser, I, we're still going to do a Hellraiser episode. We had to do it separate from the movie night because getting the movie night, you know, set up and all together, that was a lot. We're going to learn. That's a learning experience. We're going to move from that. I would love to do, like, the episode before and then, like, right before the episode comes out, we could do a movie night. So, like, if we have the episode recorded and then we do um, the movie night and then whatever. I think it'd be really cool, especially with Texas Chainsaw. I love the original Texas Chainsaw Man. There's maybe one other. I didn't like any of the other ones except maybe one, and I. It was like early two thousands. Dismay. Which one was, was like three? Yeah, three. Yeah, yeah. So I, I kind of liked that one. I know that one got shit on a little bit, but I kind of liked it. But that one, the original one, the only ones I liked. But I'll, I'm down. To that do original it. movie is one of the like movies that I can count on one hand that scared the shit out of me for the longest time and it's still like that like that movie still to this day in 2018 it's got like those effects the practical like the skin and the blood all of that it looks real man no i mean the original is always going to be the favorite but and in all honesty my favorite is actually the beginning um the 2006 oh, wow. movie because oh, wow. of the gore um i'm a i'm a gore fan so they really brought it, I think, with the beginning. And then, of course, after that is the um, remake in 2003. But, uh, yeah, we'll get into that eventually because uh, Bones owes me a movie night and episode now. You like the 2003 one? Yes, I love the 2003 one. And that's uh, we had filmed a music video at that um, slaughterhouse mm-hmm. that I mentioned in, in our episode. I remember that. You're slacking. Fucking episode. You're slacking. I hate that episode so much. That episode is saved on my phone. Gold. Like I just, it was amazing. If we ever, knock on wood, if oh. we ever lost, like you know, media tracks to where we recorded, if it happened to that episode, I wouldn't be upset. Oh my god, <laughs> I would. I would probably be a lot happier. Is like an actual like highlight of my life. You know like, what the. F- Fucked There's been partners. a few um, requests for Bones to use his scream as a sound effect. Oh yeah. God. Why? Why? Hold on. Hold on. See, look, Time we, out. That voice is coming back. Do you hear that? Why? 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 <laughs> uh, yeah. No, it's not. You got, it, oh, man. It, it, listen to me. I'm glad you I made c- you that upset. It just you it c- makes me smile. You oh, came on man. here and fucking castrated me in front of everybody. Yeah. On the show. Like, just came on, 100%. like, stomping around like you own the fucking place. Yeah. And so that episode, she really did, though. Stomp my balls out. <laughs> and now you are, like, you're trying to take my sound effects, too? Like, here you are again. Like, who let you in, even? And you literally did. Yeah. <laughs> and, and now you're going to take my sound effects? Well, it's like, not just me. There's, like, several requests for I that. So uh, we'll, we'll get that for next week. Like my, Ooh, you, for next week. Fuck next wow. week. Wow. Wow. Listen to me. You not only want me to go back into the episode. No, you know what? Just me, you're right. We are getting that sound effect for yeah, next we are. week. We are. That is happening now. You you want me 
to go into that episode, find the 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 squeal. I guess we can call it a squeal. Yeah, it's a squeal. That I made. <laughs> it was, it was <laughs> I like squeal. to call it your your soul leaving your body. <laughs> it really was second circumcision. Yeah, like it was like if somebody cut my dick off. And slap me with it. That's probably how I would scream. But you want me to go into that episode, listen to it again, which is painful enough. Find the squeal, cut the squeal out, put it into my sound effects, and willingly play it. Yes. Like, no. Ah, we'll do it for the bit. fans. Yeah. Yeah. The fans want it. Fuck the fans. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't mean that. Uh, no. Okay, Miska. Ah, took that L, boy. <laughs> yeah, that was, that, I don't know if fine. I should talk about it. Bad journalism. Oh, here we go. I'm, I'm not, I'm not. But I, I, I feel it needs to be said. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna get into it. But it's a shame how much in this genre, respect to certain people who have given so much, and like journalism, man, who like they, they'll just shit on that and not care about it and try and get clicks like we're I mean, not there is there i do support journalists and of there course is, there is good but journalism that's not journalism there, that, that is something that is fun that, and i have yeah. i don't like that at all no and you know kind of what i'm getting into is you know there was an article posted about one of the episodes that we did on a certain website i'm not going to get into all that but you know i don't like that man and you know we're really not into that and if you're going to write something, you know, be true to it. Like, don't just try and get clicks because, you know what, at the end of the day, that's not substance. That's not cool, man. Like, you know, you guys, like, I don't want to get into it, but I feel like it needs to be said. Just, man, you know what I'm talking about? Yes. Because you used to, you, you uh, Fangoria, like, you did it for a living. Yeah. Um, and not not only that, is um, like, certain websites would write things about us as well so i got to be on that end of it where um like i knew the truth behind things and saw what people would turn it into um totally something else and so i know exactly uh what you're talking about and it's it's uh it's unfortunate that people um stoop to that level homeboy took that l though (laughs) but yeah that's not cool man don't don't I mean, we, we do this stuff because we really love the genre and we want to push it forward and we want it to get attention and, you know, we want people talking about it and to see it. Like, there are kids nowadays, man, they've never seen Tales from the Crypt. Right. You know, they've never seen uh, the original Texas Chainsaw. They've never seen the original Leprechaun movie. And, like, these are things that are, are stable. I mean, we're moving, obviously, Tales from the Crypt's a lot more prominent. But, you know, the fact still remains. There are things that, haven't been seen that need to be seen they deserve to be seen and they were iconic and such a huge part of our lives growing up and we're trying to push that to the top so people can see it the best way that we can with you know the reach that we have and then you have people like that just fucking you it's like we're taking a step forward and then some people like drag us four or five steps back and it's like what the fuck are you doing yeah, but onward and upward. Um, yes. It worked out for the Definitely. best. Day. So here we are. Um, that is a great way to end the podcast. Wait, I got one more thing. No. I have to. No. I have to. No, this was a great way to he end the podcast. He deserves it. He deserves it. Does he not? Dismay, what's his name? Miska. What a beautiful pussy you are. You can catch me on Twitter, at Mikey Bones. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. <laughs> Core Pocket. You can find me at Mike Miranda. You can follow the podcast at Slasher Radio. And you can send all your Mikey Bowens related hate mail to at Mikey's Asleep. All of it. Uh, and dismay at dismay00. Zero zero. And will. don't say it, Bones. I know what you're going to say. Don't say it. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I did. You did. You did. That, the Hennessy you did. in you. Hennessy. I love Hennessy. Isn't Hennessy? Hennessy is. Amazing. I have Hennessy at home. It's like waiting for me. It's like if Barney, uh, Barney fucked a Teletubby, Hennessy would be the baby. You like Barney and Hen- and Teletubbies that much? It's magical. Oh, that's my God. point. You could have said, like, Superman. Or Remember like that Superman. shit? With the tree and the hole and the hole in the ground and the... Da- 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 no. What? What is that? It's Barney, man. No, I don't... I'm the, I don't I remember that I was afraid of Barney. What? <laughs> Why? 
I wasn't afraid of Barney. <laughs> like, I watched Barney. But oh, <laughs> there was a birthday party. I was, I don't remember this, obviously. My, like, a first birthday or a second birthday, my mom had, like, one of my cousins dress up as, like, Barney. It wasn't Barney. It was, like, the yellow fucker. Oh, BJ. And BJ! Shut up, BJ. Like, I guess, like, one of you... What was it? Mel? One of my cousins dressed up as BJ. I guess BJ's the name. And it just scared the shit out of me. <laughs> At, like, one or two. I don't even know how old I was. I don't remember this, obviously, but... Fuck Barney. <laughs> fuck Barney. Who says fuck Barney? But, um, yeah, you can listen to us uh, at, uh, what's our website? Oh, my God. Slash our website? Slash our radio.com. What else would our website be? I need another shot. Let's finish. I want a shot. I haven't had any shots today. I've just had a mixed drink. Slash your radio.com on iTunes, on Stitcher, on friggin' Podbay. We had listeners on. It was on Rump SoundCloud. Rump. Write a review. Five stars. We will read it on the show. Subscribe. You know, tweet at us. Don't be afraid. I know Bones is a big bitch, but he's alright. He's good. I won't yell at you. You, you yell at a lot of people. Not, not, no. Shout, shout out to Beatspin.com. No, no, shout out to Beatspin.com. <laughs> shout out to Beatspin.com. Shout out to Beatspin.com. Shout out to Beatspin.com. Yeah, fuck it. Shout out to Beatspin. Shout out to Beatspin.com. I gotta get the fuck off the <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night from Slasher Radio. Fuck me sideways. I can't. Well, you you weren't drunk when we sat down and started this. This is like Hennessy up new. to here. This is new. And now the cu- well, the drink was up to here. The it Hennessy was. was up to here, and now the cup is up to here. April, we've been drinking since about six p.m. <sighs> maybe. Quarter pocket. What? Are you gonna give me a? B- no. Fuck. Number one oh, rule. Geez. No family. At least it's gotta be at least a third rule. <laughs> number one. <sorry. laughs> the family that I have. Oh, it's dear. rule number one. It could be like three. Rule no. Two and a half. No. No. Rule two and three quarters. Give me that. That shit what? should be number one. You shouldn't be out. Come on. What? Shitting like he did? That's the number one rule. You can't shit like that. Oh, well. This Nobody least... shits like that except Stevie, so. No. No, his asshole. But the worst part about his shits is that you know it's Is him. he even human? <laughs> There's <laughs> like a smell that you know. <laughs> yeah. Tell, me not, tell me not. Tell me not. Yeah, somebody like was a, up here. Like his own brand. Shit. I said Steve. I didn't even know. I didn't even know he was up here. I was like, Steve fucking did it. <laughs> it's like when somebody like blows up like a room. You're like, all right, who shit? And then there's some deniability. With Stevie, you know he shit. You know it. Anyway, <sighs> you want to wrap this some bitch up? Quarter pocket. Yeah. I'm about T minus four seconds from pulling my d- out. You that drunk? You have more drink to go. I want to finish the podcast when that drink is done. Oh, I want to see one. eleven, like eleven, like level of like drunk bone. Do you think I can drink all this in one go? Yes. You think I can do it? Like, dude, this is practically all Hennessy. Let's see, hold on, let me. Let me no, 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 no. Okay. Go, do it. You did it. Oh shit! Oh. <coughs> now is that mixed with iced tea or coke? <laughs> oh no! I can't even smell. I don't even know. Okay, he might throw up. I hope it'll throw up. Oh my god! <coughs> Just a burp. Uh. If you're throwing up, you know where you're gonna go throw up. I'm good. No, you, I survived. you know where the bathroom would be. That's why I'm not throwing up. <laughs> oh, God, I'm going to pay for that. All right, let's wrap this up while I'm still coherent.
Somebody draw us in. So the stink that you're talking about from Stevie Juice was not Stevie Juice. It was you. No, it was def It was Stevie shit. It wasn't Stevie Juice. Guys, we almost died tonight. We almost had no slash radio. <laughs> April would have been up to the Skype call by herself. <laughs> yeah, Dismay almost had to had to stick it out with Lyndon and do the whole thing by herself because Stephen's asshole. Uh, you all remember Stevie Juice, I'm sure. Unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, you really have. <laughs> no, he's, you remember Stevie Juice, though. The meat. I mean, how could you forget this bastard? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He, uh, yeah. he took a shit in my house that uh, the property value has plummeted. <laughs> the foundation is damaged. I think that's a shit stain on the roof. The toilet on is... On the ceiling. The toilet is... It has to be replaced. I, the, the government called. <laughs> I, I, it's, it was horrific. Oh, dear God. Why'd you bring that up? I don't want to talk about that turd. And this is the intro. This isn't even, like, the outro. This is Welcome to Slasher Radio. Welcome to Slasher Radio, our uncle shit. <laughs> That's not news. That's too many times.